Hey everyone, Sam McKay here from Enterprise DNA. Now, I'm going to do a quick and easy tutorial here calculating one of the most common metrics, especially if you're dealing with anything to do with, say, like sales, revenue, transactions, so on and so forth. We want to somehow get our calculations to a percentage margin right it doesn't have to be profit margin this but i'm going to do this example in uh, here but it could be any sort of margin like something to do with percent right now the key thing to note if we look at uh i'll just jump to the model first actually if we jump to the model first we want to make sure that you know um that the model is sort of set up to an optimized way so i'm just going to quickly move a few things around i know that microsoft have within the model currently love to format it um in sort of like a, a star schema personally not a very f fond of that especially for sort of novice users of power bi like i love this sort of waterfall technique or sometimes called the snowflake snowflake technique but i like to call it the waterfall technique just to be a little bit original now um it's all about the filters flowing down to your fact table from your lookup table right so within our sales table so this is our fact table right so i'm just going to jump to the sales table and just let's have a quick look at it so if you see here there's actually no way to create percent profit margin there is actually no profit numbers in here and what a lot of users do when they're starting out with power bi is they think oh i'll go create a calculated column and i'll go okay i've got my revenue minus my um my quantity times unit costs and that's going to equal my profit then i can work out my profit margin well the thing is, is that you don't need to do that which is the great thing about power bi is you can you you can do all of those calculations inside of measures okay so what i'm going to do i've created a really simple measure here called uh total sales it's just literally summing up the total revenue column you know i i say this all the time don't get too hung up you know, even if you're dealing with something totally different like HR data or marketing data, you know, a lot of these techniques are reusable across anything, across any industry, across any business function. You know, the, these examples, you know, specifically, you know, specifically around like measure branching where we start with our core measures and then we branch out into our, um, other measures like margins. Uh, this is reusable. All of the same techniques are exactly the same. Okay. And so with measure branching, what I mean is that we're starting off with these core measures like total sales, and then I'll create another measure here called total cost. And now I'm gonna use sum X here, okay? And sum X is a really important measure because it enables me to do calculations at every single row of a table. So it's gonna go, it's gonna iterate through every single row in whatever table I specify, in this particular case sales, right? And I'm gonna go, um, sum x sales and then at every row i'm going to go quantity times the total unit cost because remember in that sales table that we just looked at there was no actual total costs column there was only this particular column okay there was these two columns so i needed to do a multiplication at every single row iterate through every single row and then sum up the results and that's what sum x does that's what all the iterating functions do okay so then i can bring in my total costs here Okay, so now this is where measure branching comes in. So I've got total sales and I've got total costs. Well, I can create another really simple measure called total profits, can't I? Right, I'm just gonna simply branch out again. I can go total sales minus total costs, okay? And now I've got my total profits. And now finally, if I wanna to go to my margins, well then I can create another measure here and I could say, I could call this like profit margins. Um, or I could even just, you know, you could be more generic and say percent margins, right? And then I'm going to use a function called divide and I'm going to say um, total profits divided by total sales. Okay, and then I'm going to put an alternative result of zero. And then we want to make this into a percentage as well. Oh, sorry, I pushed the wrong one. Okay, and so now I'm seeing the percentage margin. Now, some of you might think, well, why well, could just do that in one formula? My recommendation is to branch out slowly. Start from your the, the simplest measures you can create before you go and create this one, because think about how easy every single measure was that we worked through 
when we built it out step by step. And it's so much easier to audit as well when you're able to break things out in a table and be able to look at this result and this result and this result just to double check and audit your numbers. I can't stress that enough. Um, the Every time, you, especially through the enterprise DNA community that I see overly complex formula for like for like things that, that sh just should be quite simple, uh, you know, it's, it's sort of pretty crazy to me. So, you know, I, I wanna, you know, you know, this this here is a pretty pointless if you think about it is a pretty pointless um uh visualization because it's just way too much data right so maybe you know and this is also why this is so good because it's reusable right so i can actually click out of the date and then jump into um looking at my customers still this is a little bit busy if you think about it right it's a little bit busy all the data is a bit too um, similar, you know, if I was you know being really critical the, and wanted to make sure that my visualization stood out, probably the best way to showcase this, and I would say, is to utilize the conditional formatting here. So maybe I want to do a um, sort of like background color. I think this is always a nice way, especially when you have a whole lot of data points, like a lot of data points that are quite similar, and then maybe you want to create two quite contrasting colors. Um, you go, you know, from dark. Uh, actually, we'll go to light blue to dark blue. We'll just see what this looks like. Still a bit too similar. It's probably, be, I would say, I would say because it's probably like a zero value in here. That's probably why. Oh, it doesn't make much sense. It doesn't make much sense with the date again, actually. So let's let's sub out the date and we'll put in the we'll put in the customer. A little bit better. A little bit better here. Because they're all they're all all of the dates are quite similar. Another way you can do it actually, if you you can actually um, and this and this is this is an interesting sort of uh, thing to dive into because it's not always just about the calculations, isn't it? It's about the visualizations as well. You can actually change what you showcase in this axis, right? And so what I can do, I think it's the y axis, I believe, or is it the x? No, it's the x, isn't it? Ah, okay, so I can go a start, right? So I'm going to say, okay, let's start at 30%. Okay, and so you see here now there's a little bit more variability, right? And so you just, you know, obviously you need to make sure that, um, you know, you need to make sure that your consumer knows what they're looking at. But if you wanted to show, you know, the difference, it's going to be a, a little, look a little bit better when you, when you reduce the size of the visualization uh, or you change the, access that you show in a visualizations versus you know having nothing and it all looks the same but it look it totally depends on, on what you want to show another way you can show it is you can maybe break out like your top five versus your bottom five so a number of different ways that you can play around with that okay so hopefully you enjoy this one you know not not super difficult this is this is sort of like dex 101 but um but essential right and you know i want to make sure that you start off in the right place and then can ultimately evolve into more advanced calculations more advanced visualizations you know telling really good stories around your um around your raw data okay take care and good luck with this one hey everyone thanks for tuning in to enterprise dna tv if you enjoyed the content covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website, plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best, take care.